Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Disc Guidance segment with the 2MK team. Sound check is running. Sound check is cleared. We are reviewing the same bot as last week, the one you saw in our Rising Starfire, with some minor modifications that make the overall bot better and will be the ones you will find on our website 2-mk.org when looking up this bot type. Now, as we mentioned before, King of Fighters sometimes seems to randomly lose a bot. It's not entirely clear why, because it will have all the settings, for in this case, the slots are set to play, but there's nobody home. In this case, though, that is a good chance to actually show off the recordings, but I'm going to be going pretty quickly. So if you don't understand what's going on here, we suggest watching a different stream. Generally, the previous one, the same Rising Starfire. As this is going to be much different from a regular Disguided stream, completely focused on bot inputs, changes, reasons, and finally, a short segment on how to use the bot for a specific advanced form of training. But we're going straight into it, and I'm basically just blitzing through the recordings you need to do, and showing you that no, this process is not simple even for us, and unfortunately, if the game does lose your bot, you would in fact have to repeat it. So you can get to see firsthand what we have to go through in order to do this. Buttons are set so that one of the shoulder buttons on a pad, if you are a pad user, is set to record. In this case, the repeat, which you will need for testing it, is set to touchpad, and these are whatever you need them to be. This bot's recordings are always done with Kyo, as he's the easiest to test whether or not things are working correctly. The recording slot in this case is set to recording slot 1. And we're beginning with input 1, which is a first frame crouching heavy punch into a quarter circle forward light punch. You're holding the heavy punch the entire way. The light punch is tapped and then released. So for me, I am currently holding... I should turn that on. For clarity. You can see that I'm currently holding the... heavy punch and down. I'm still going to do this from Kyo's side, which means I'm going to quickly do L1 to start the recording, quarter circle forward light punch, L1 again. And on that side, it will tell me whether or not it's actually done the job, because it will show me what I was pressing at the end. You can barely see it just above Shermie's head right now. 27 frames of nothing, which was actually 27 frames that that input took, and then it noted that I was holding light and heavy punch. This isn't necessarily great because I don't always want to be holding the light punch, but it doesn't always matter. So we'll go into seeing if it works. This is good enough, more or less. Except for the fact that despite it working, it's slightly too slow. If you're familiar with this move, 114 Shiki Aragami, I believe it is, he should do this three times, and that 27 frames is apparently either too long or I ended it too early. So let's look into that quickly before we move on. You don't really have to change anything, we're just starting the recording again. So, heavy punch, down. 15 frames this time. It looks right. Let's see. No, in this case, the reason is that I missed the, the light punch itself at the end. So, reposition and try again. Yeah. Timing these things is mostly related to how your fingers tend to synchronize with each other. If the left hand is faster, different things happen. If the right hand is faster, other things happen. Yeah. That looks like it must have been right, because 
you can sort of see it, but no, it can't be because you only see that one frame of the back heavy punch, or in Keo's case, forward heavy punch, and no light punch yet. That tells me that my hands are out of sync in that way, and I should put more effort into making sure that the light punch is hit before I hit the L1. I think that would have been right, but now we're at 25 frames again. So, still too slow. This one actually doesn't matter if you get it that quickly correct, so I could just move on, and I probably will in a moment. But, now I have it right. And that's what it's supposed to look like. We're just gonna move straight on then. The only thing that needs to be changed is slot 2 as the recording slot and we move on to what the correct next thing is. In this case it's down forward from Kyo's perspective down forward heavy kick plus light kick and you hold this the entire time too. We are updating the website to show this. And then do another quarter circle forward. You can't be sure that I got it, but given that I attempted to do the movement and we see 26 frames, we do have sort of a way to test it because he'll wiggle correctly. Here we go. He's standing up at some point and I started it down forward. So I'm going to assume that I got all the way back to the forward because that's what should have happened. I can test it by turning on slot 1, but you'd have to check the instructions as to what exactly that would mean. As soon as you've recorded something, it will change to be the only thing that plays. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. This is happening partially because of the quarter circle forward from the light kick part being followed by the quarter circle forward light punch which causes him to do the super and because he's not doing it in quite the same timing everything's working fine but we're now recording slot 3 which is really easy because it's literally just tapping forward then back then down that's it and now when I press restart he's just going to wiggle around It's a little better if he's inconsistent as to whether he's going forward or backward. In this case, I think he's drifting very slightly forward, and that's a little less than perfect, but he, on average, does a decent job. You'll see why this matters later. It's related to how well he blocks, or how well bots in general block. If I wanted to test them all together, I would have to turn them all back on, and it's usually a good idea to just advance to the next recording slot whenever you do that, just so you don't press any buttons to accidentally overwrite something you actually wanted. We get a little dash there. Possibly fine. There's other ways to do certain ones as well, and we'll get back to those as well later. But we're now recording slot 4. Please note that I will go back to slot 1 because it's not, again, not exactly the same as what's on the website and there's a reason. But I wanted to show it off this way first. For this one we are starting it down, doing a quarter circle back light kick, then a quarter circle forward. There is possibly a light kick in it at the end of this too, and I'll show you why later. I think I ended that too slowly. But there's no easy way to tell. Mm. 
Yeah, no easy way to tell. Because if you do it right, the whole thing will happen and it will never technically register anything else. The number will keep on going because as far as the Shermie site is concerned, you went from hitting no buttons to hitting no buttons. So it's sometimes easier to make yourself hit the light kick for both for forward and backward, and sometimes easier to not. Just do whatever suits you for the most part, and we'll show you why it matters does or does not matter later on. The important thing here is that he will not do the forward hopping kick if you didn't hit the last light kick. That's it. At no point will it result in it from here, which can become meaningful later. Even if I combine that with other things, because of the way the kicks are, he generally won't do the hopping kick. And if you need him to do it, to get used to just about anything, it's better to make sure he explicitly has it. But he is less likely to do certain things and push himself into your space too much if you don't actually cause that to happen. We're moving on to slot 5, the final. From Kyo's perspective, we're holding forward light punch plus light kick, and we're holding that button combination until the end. We're going to do a half circle back from here, which is usually kind of hard. But you can sort of tell because you will see that specific input at the end. The other direction plus both the light punch and the light kick, and that's generally a sign that you've done it correctly. He'll just wiggle and pretty much this is the guarantee that things are working right. If you play this one and slot 4 together, he will roll around a bit, and sometimes, if it's working quite right, you'll get his R.E.D. kick, which isn't generally all that guaranteed, because he has to be doing some other things animation-wise for it to come out the way you want it to. There's also other scenarios where he won't do it even though he has this input to style, but we haven't worked out all of what those are yet. With the basic idea being that if you did a quarter circle back correctly, and then did a different quarter circle, he generally should do it eventually. So I'm suspicious right now because he hasn't done it at all. Quite simply, the quarter circle back and light kick that was in the action 4 should be able to combine with this one to result in the move we're looking for. Chances are that I didn't hit the down correctly, somehow. Even that should still work because of the way the game's inputs are read, but you never know what happens sometimes. So I'm going to have to fix one of these until it's working, and I'm not sure which one, so I'm going to go with fixing 5 because it's easiest, mostly. 24 frames. System situation unknown. Let's go. Remember that it will turn off all other actions when you do this, forcing you to do this this way. More demonstration that you can get the hopping kick if you jump over his head correctly, but that's not necessarily helpful.
Alright, I'm more suspicious of slot 4 right now. So I'm going to try to fix that instead. Remember to crouch. Quarter circle back, light kick. Quarter circle forward, light kick. Or just quarter circle forward. But again, no matter what you do, this will always only give you this, and you must turn on this one to see if anything different happens. But if you're practiced enough, or just lucky, and even if you aren't, you can expect this to take about 15 minutes to do, which is unfortunate in most other games that don't save the bot at all because it means you probably have to put in that much effort just to get a single training session. But again, fortunately this game does save bots at least a bit. So let's look at it as it is, without thinking too much about whether or not it's correct. As you can often use that for your own purposes just to see whether or not you can get something out of training with it without spending any more time on the bot itself. For what Kyo bot is for, this works okay. Part of the reason why we're showing this off in this way without caring if it's all that good is because of one of the purposes of today's demonstration. As noted, it doesn't specifically matter if this is working as intended every single time. You can still get lots of benefit out of training with these, even if you ended up having to re-input it and it's not working as it should. Let's go with should. But the main thing that this change helps with when it's working correctly is with the behaviors of other bots in the Big Fire series, let's call it that. So I'm going to switch quickly to Mai as the opponent and demonstrate one of the purposes of this bot that you can use mainly for Mai, but sometimes with Ralph as well. I'm going to Mai first because Ralph relies a lot more on the inputs being perfect than Mai does. If you realize that you are, like me, for the day, stuck with imperfect inputs and you don't know why, switch to Mai and hope for the best. <laughs> Technically, this is also an imperfect input for the main thing you would be using my bot for most days. But this one's a lot easier to fix. Yesterday's Feeling Thursday stream was a bigger explanation of what you wanted to do in KOF as a whole. And Mai is a very good way to train this. Especially when she isn't doing her elbow too much. So, on the days where you don't have my elbowing everywhere, when the input isn't perfect, or when you chose not to put in the light kick, you have a better chance of training this thing. And this is also another good reason for the crouch heavy punch instead of the standing or the forward heavy punch that is actually on the bot page as for what you should do for action 1. This isn't so much a point system, but again, based on using a specific main action. Because she's caught in less animation, she doesn't have 
as much problem spamming super, let's say. But the thing you're aiming to learn here is dodge into the right position and then get what you want from there. Similarly, dash into the right position and get what you want from there. She's not just going to let you get there most of the time. And you can probably get yourself out of the habit of moving in particular ways that don't make sense for this game as much. Your opponent can check your approaches, but while my bot, when she's working completely correctly, is meant to help you get that sort of thing, a hop input perfect, she's pretty good at getting you to learn your dash spacings. Because if you're stuck in the corner, she'll teach you when to not do them. And if you're too close, you still get poked occasionally for other things she wants you to do. She'll clip you out of a lot of things, and therefore it's in her best interest to always set that up. Not everything I'm doing here is actually a good idea per se. But the general concept is the same. You can practice just dashing and stopping your dash at the right time so you don't get hit, understanding how far away your opponent is, and so on. This is also a good way to practice combos that are relatively simple to do, but might be harder to do if you didn't get into the right range at the beginning. Even if you just want to dash up and learn to do your pressure moves from there, or dash up all the way to throw, you can still practice both those things this way. Similarly, let's go to Ralph. And from Ralph's side, we're going to try another, not so much fix, but the other variation of specific things, as well as demonstrate why it matters that we use the Crouch Heavy Punch instead of the standing one. These sorts of quick changes to what a bot is set to do, when it's not too hard to do the input, is pretty helpful. So this is partially why I did the one at the beginning the way I did, as I didn't want to be stuck later in the stream trying to get action one right when it wouldn't go well with the flow. Yeah. Ralph's crouching heavy punch is his better move. Why do you have that? Is that your quarter circle back? I thought it was not. Oh well. I'm glad to see it. Obviously, Ralph will move forward a lot more than my will on certain occasions. And with enough meter, he becomes this type of problem. Similar to Kyo, he can be used to teach you how to get out of certain moves if he's constantly doing other ones that would normally catch you. But you can still train the same sort of thing. He has better range and bigger punishes if you dash incorrectly. But you still gain a lot from dashing in general. But yes, entirely, it is because his crouch heavy punch is so much better. So you'll notice that despite having long moves that quickly advance at you, good rolls, and relatively good spacing, he's not always that threatening. And you can spend a lot of time learning things like that, 
Can I counter this move? Because it doesn't have enough invincibility, or because my position is better. Those who are used to super moves and similar being very invincible in other games will often find themselves quite confused as to exactly how much they can beat people's random mid-screen stuff. If you ever wanted an explanation as to why people don't do that to you constantly in this game, that's usually why. The higher level players will just hit you for it and you won't get anything at all. You will notice that in general, I will quote unquote get away with dashing, even though my opponent can hit a lot of options. This is generally because of the way that hitboxes in this game interact with each other. You can prepare yourself for a lot of things, and knowing exactly how far you intend to dash really matters. One of the main reasons this is helpful for advanced training is the amount of time it takes before your character will stop dashing in order to block, and this game allows you to do that quite quickly. So if you've ever decided that you wanted to be in footsie range and you were not able to get there easily, just dash at people. You'll get really used to double flicking that stick or double tapping your forward in this game. And you should absolutely get very used to that. Oh good, they got the charge version. I think it's heavy into that. I never remember. Similarly, depending on how you've input it, the bot will also have a tiny dash so you can get used to the idea that someone else will do the same to you. Alright, with that demonstration out of the way, let's quickly attempt to fix one of these to show what goes the other way. Ralph is generally unaffected, I believe. We're going to re-record slot 4, which is again, quarter circle back, light kick, quarter circle forward. In this case, light kick again. And that is basically how Ralph is affected by this. There is a way to make him do that particular move there you just saw. Without explicitly doing the light kick at the end. But it's uncommon enough that if we wanted the Ralph Gatling, because it's one of the point systems, you do in fact have to put it in. And we will be updating all of the pages, which were mostly copy-pasted from each other, for all of the specifics. But it doesn't really help you that much with specifics if you don't know which way to put it in for your general purposes. So, that's part of the purpose of this stream. So with everything on, here we go again. He is particularly good because with punishing that move means understanding exactly how far forward it reaches when you dash up to it. So he's quite useful in that way because if you've gotten his down, you can not only learn specific punish spacings, but also to deal with this move.
and to get out of bad situations in other ways. Perfectly held. Off you go. And therefore now, to close up, because as I said, not going to be very long, I will again review what the differences were, and a thing that was affecting Kyo that I don't really want to extend the stream by trying to fix or explain fully. As Kyo's R.E.D. kick, his overhead arcing kick, is really not that important to the bot. So, it's why it's so optional whether or not he even has it. So, reviewing the bots in general... How did you hit that way? Oh right, fine. That was a crossover. I am sure that is not how that works. But, I will gladly go look it up again. Far, I think. He is absolutely supposed to spam this move on us. So don't be concerned about that at all. Depending on how you input it, he will also do an uppercut. But we're still, again, demonstrating most from the perspective of learning the dash up once. And his stand light kick does a good job in that space. He also tends to hit you low better than the others, let's say, due to his extended ranges. So you can get quite used to not being able to dash up as far, for example. Generally, this is your goal for general bot play, but Kyo will stay so much closer that it kind of doesn't matter. I so would swear that that move does not... Was he really just not doing it the entire time before? I'm gonna assume that action 4 was wrong, and it's now fixed in the other way. Which gives you the benefit of getting to see what it's supposed to be like. I doubt that is because I added the light kick to the end. It's probably just that somewhere in the quarter circle bat light kick, I had something wrong before. Possibly I tried to move from down too quickly at the beginning of the recording, and that was ruining it. It seems to be the more likely reason compared to everything else. So technically now, aside from the starting crouch heavy kick and crouch heavy punch in action one, instead of a standing heavy punch, this is about as good as you're going to get. So fortunately, I've managed to get all that into one stream. And therefore, finally, my butt with everything, which results in her doing this move. I was so expecting her to start with it. Can she even do the regular version in this way? 
she should be able to do this just- there we go. And I doubt that was just because I jumped over her head. You can check our other stream for how you are supposed to deal with that. But again, remember the concept of why we're doing this and why we're looking for training in the way we are relative to this bot. Move forward! Oof. And work from there. The proper way to move forward on her is to hop, or even to hyper hop. But, you can still just plain learn to run. And it can help you because sometimes you knock your opponent far away, or they're running away from you, more importantly. And it's important to realize how far up to dash block. Or, understand that dashing is so fast in this game that you can technically use it for whiff punishes. Similarly, blocking when dashing. I don't know what if it works out this way quickly in games you normally play, but it's fairly fast in King of Fighters, and as far as I remember has always been. You're still going to be vulnerable, but it's really not that bad. In fact, you can usually dash into specific specials with basically no delay as to how long it takes you to come out of the dash. Although Maya is moving a little fast for me today, apparently. Let's go back over there for a moment. She does cross the screen very quickly when she does that, so be careful. And similarly, dashing in this game does require you to actually input the entire move. The fact that you are holding forward does not seem to be enough to get uppercuts, for example. Or sometimes it does what you expect, and sometimes it doesn't. It's very complicated. But it is complicated in that way that implies that you have to learn it. And what better way to learn it than facing a bot that will do it repeatedly instead of having to deal with a person. At the end of the day, the general purpose of this bot is to teach you to do combos. To get calm enough to do your combos correctly, to get a bit of hit confirming practice to make sure that you understood why your combo did or did not work. But it would be nice to see how to extend that, particularly in the case of Maya and Ralph, particularly without shifting too much of the inputs, how to make that into this is how you should dash at people on top of all of that. As for the other characters who work fairly well with these inputs, most of them don't work as well for the dash training. Billy Kane is repetitive. Cronin still works pretty well because of how he works as a generality, but is more so learning about other things because he will tend to move so quickly forward that you don't want to dash at him too much at all. And here's your demonstration of Terry's movement. In Terry's case, you just get to play footsies a lot. Power them. Crack two. Yeah. Watch him. 
but he does have the helpful part where he's slightly harder to punish. So from the perspective of learning about punishes, he's still useful, but do understand that this isn't teaching you much about Terry. You could easily say that the others aren't teaching you much about those characters either, but depending on if the bot flows a particularly strong or good way on any given day, you might get some real experience here and there for the others. Whereas for Terry, it's okay, but it's generally not strongly enough like him. Even with the Crouch Heavy Punch. We are looking into whether or not it makes sense to try therefore, and we'll probably be reviewing that this weekend to see what changes we can make to this to make a Terry bot that is simple enough that you could just change this to it without too much lost time and make it work. And if we don't find anything, one way or another we're probably still releasing a Terry bot version. Even though, depending on your perception, he's more so Big Earth than Big Fire. I won't lengthen the stream with demonstrations of why it doesn't work as well for the others. Just understand that if you wanted to get Kyo, action 1 needs to be a little different. For Mai, it doesn't matter as much. Her standing heavy punch is slightly better than her crouching. And for Ralph, the crouching is, strictly speaking, the best one. But even that can rely on your character, so we figured we'd show off the capacity to be pretty flexible with that overall. Okay, Terry, give us a big send-off. Not that kind. Because of the way this character is, he doesn't actually use his supers compared to the others. And that's partially why he's not the best at the moment. But we probably don't have to change too much in order to get him to use super properly. Or some of his better strategies in neutral. So we're going to be working on that primarily. It's just sad to see him sit on all that meter. He is a good one for teaching you to dash into hop, though. Or jump if you can't manage to hop in time. And therefore, a good way to practice hops. Once again, all bots can be found on our website 2-fk.org. In this case, under KOF 15 bots. You can use the Crouch Heavy Punch from this stream or whatever is on the bot page right now. And we'll add additional notes by character, but trying not to mess it around too much because you still generally have to input the bot from Kyo's side in order to be clear on what's actually happening. Next week we'll probably be managing to release our angel bot for even more complicated things, but she tends to be a lot more defense oriented, so we more so intend to put that out for if you somehow gain so much experience from dashing up on these ones that you feel you're ready to move on within the space of time. So don't go jumping into that one too quickly if you're not particularly familiar. Specifics of the release of any Terry bot as well as any information on what we're streaming tomorrow, we should probably be having our 60 times Dead or Alive Battle Lounge, and on Sunday our Do Not Falter DNF Duel Lounge. But I'm not sure because that had some weird information about patches, though it's probably over by now. Monday we'll be back to mishmashing Battle Lounge in Street Fighter V, and the first post-patch Tuesday Melt on Tuesday. 
sadly last week we were not able to get Wednesday night in birth and we may be likely to be set off this week as we may have some health complications to be dealing with across the team and we're expecting it to kick in around that time so there's no guarantee of next week's feeling Thursday King of Fighters Battle Lounge but you should still get this guidance for Angelbot next week provided that we don't have a terrible luck with all of the little health bits. This has been really in 14 to MK. I hope it was helpful. Good luck with your training and good night everyone.